From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Jim Carter, Johnny. Hi. How'd you make out with Hillary Franks? And the agent who sold the policy? He's worried, he's scared, and he's already doing everything wrong. I left him about an hour ago to think things over. Ah, Mrs. Kennedy's fighting back. What do you mean? Her lawyer served notice on us an hour ago to pay up on the policy or else. Just a bluff. Yeah, but this wasn't. She got a court order and made the coroner release her brother's body. She took it right to the crematorium. Exhibit A is a pile of ashes by now. Uh Uh-oh. Her next step is to contact the state insurance commission and have them order us to pay off or show cause. We'll have to act fast. Maybe I better go back to see Mr. Hillary Franks. Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. (laughs) Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar. Location, Tucson, Arizona. To the Universal Adjustment Bureau Home Office, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Lansing fraud. Fifty thousand. And by now, I was sure it was fraud. Expense account, item number eight, five dollars, stenographic services. I dictated a hastily composed letter to the State Insurance Commission advising them that Worldwide was withholding payment on the claim of Mrs. Arlene Kennedy pending a complete investigation of the circumstances of her brother's death. I enclosed copies of the original physical examination and the coroner's autopsy findings pointing out that in our opinion it was impossible for James Lansing to have successfully passed an insurance examination in the first place. I enclosed copies of statements from the examining physician, Dr. Mayhood, and the members of his office staff, all of whom were unable to identify the body of James Lansing. Expense account item 9, 52 cents, postage. I sent the letter to the state capitol special delivery in the hope it would arrive there before Mrs. Kennedy's lawyers took the anticipated action. After that, I drove back over to the office of Hillary Franks. He was the same as I left him an hour before. A little shaken, but still unable to realize quite what was happening. Yes, Mr. Dollar? Mr. Franks, I wonder if you've got anything to say to me. Nothing, Mr. Dollar. I was hoping you might want to make a statement. Oh? About what? Mrs. Kennedy's attempting to defraud your insurance company. I don't know what you're talking about, Mr. Dollar. I sold her brother an insurance policy. I don't even know Mrs. Kennedy. There are a lot of things about this you say you don't know. Do you want me to lay it on the line? If you like. All right. Someone else had to take that physical examination for James Lansing two years ago. I think you arranged for someone to do it, or you helped Mrs. Kennedy arrange it. I think James Lansing was insured on that basis. I think he was insured with a clean intent to defraud. Lansing's health wouldn't permit that kind of insurance... Right now, our Los Angeles men are looking into Lansing's activities there. Somewhere along the line, they're going to turn up a medical history that'll show Lansing was already dying when he came to Arizona two years ago. Now, do you have anything to say, Mr. Franks? No. I think you're being very foolish. If it isn't clear how serious this can be with you, it's noted that you arranged for Lansing's physical examination. There's nothing incriminating in that. How well do you know Dr. Mayhood? Oh... Slightly, the physician is supposed to be an impartial third party. When a client has to be examined by a physician for insurance purposes, I send him to Dr. Mayhood. That's all. Dr. Mayhood sends me a Christmas card every year. I sent James Lansing to him. Just like any other? Just like any other. Oh, you worry me, Mr. Franks. You don't object to my questions or get ruffled when you're caught lying. I've given you time to think and time to make a statement regarding your part in this matter. I resent all this, Mr. Dollar. I've been an insurance broker for a good long time, and no one has ever questioned my integrity. And I think that's what you've been banking on, Mr. Franks, your reputation. Well, I've been questioning it ever since I got here, and I still question it. You couldn't have known James Lansing without being aware of his drinking habits. I'm sorry for you, Franks, but there had to be collusion here with a beneficiary, Mrs. Kennedy. And you're the logical party. Uh, Dollar... You arranged for someone else to take that examination for Lansing. Somebody who could pass it. I've given you a chance to talk to me, but you refuse. Now we'll see how you like talking to the police about it. What? I'm going to swear out a warrant for your arrest. Dollar, you... I'm going to charge you with attempted fraud and collusion. And I'm going to swear out a warrant for Mrs. Kennedy, too. You're going to... Go! Go! In the 
three minutes it took me to recover from the blow from the paperweight and get my breath inside of me and my feet under me, Hillary Franks was well out of the way and out of sight. How about that time Jim Carter walked in? Hey, what happened to you? Hillary Franks. He got scared, swung a paperweight at me and beat it. Well, if he's playing rough, I don't want to take any chances. No, I'll put that phone down. He hasn't admitted anything yet. Smacking you on the side of the head is admittance enough for me. No, I want a statement. I think I can get one. You have to find him first, and he's running. He won't run far, Jim. What makes you so sure? Hillary Franks doesn't know how to run. It was exactly 3 o'clock in the afternoon, then. At 3.25, I was back out in Catalina Vista knocking on a familiar door. And the same familiar things began to happen all over again. What do you want? I'm here to tell you about the trouble you're in, Mrs. Kennedy. Hillary Franks gave it all away. Gave what away? Who's Hillary Franks? What are you talking about? About that insurance policy that was written up and issued in your brother's name. You're the one who stood to gain most by your brother's death after having someone else take an insurance examination for him. But you had to have help to pull it off. Hillary Franks helped you. For what reason or how you got him to do it, I don't know. But I do know a man with a 17-year record as insurance broker is ruined. You're crazy. I don't know anybody named Hillary Franks. Now get out oh, of here. Oh, stop it, will you? I told him how he stood in this matter a half hour ago, and he socked me with a paperweight and beat it. I've had about enough but of you, But he isn't going to run far. Principally because he doesn't know how to run, Mrs. Kennedy. He'll cool off, and he'll begin thinking about all this business in a new light. A few minutes ago, it dawned on him what he'd done. He kicked his whole lifetime right out the window. He'd been found out. He's lost all around. And he's going to be mad about that. And you're the one he's going to be mad at because you got him into it. I told you, I don't know anybody named Hillary Franks. That's the last time I'll say it. He'll probably want to kill you, Mrs. Kennedy. What? I said he'll think about all this and he'll probably want to kill you. Do we talk now? I don't see why. I've done nothing wrong. Who did you get to take that physical for your brother? I don't know what you're talking about. You got your brother drunk enough to sign the insurance papers, didn't you? I had nothing to do with my brother taking out life insurance and naming me his beneficiary. That was his business. Now that he's dead, it's my position to receive the payment. That's all. <sighs> okay, Mrs. Kennedy. We'll get it all from Hillary Franks. Yes, why don't you do that? In the meantime, I hope you sleep well knowing what you've done. You'll never be able to prove any of these things you're saying. Never. And for 24 hours, it looked as if Mrs. Kennedy might have been right. There was no way to involve her unless we had a statement from Hillary Franks. And he was still missing. I set up a watch on Mrs. Kennedy's house, and Jim Carter kept an eye on Hillary Franks' place. About 10 o'clock that night, Jim Carter drove up. Hiya. Hi. Any action? No. Mrs. Kennedy's been in all the night. No one showed up. Mm-hmm. How about Frank's place? No. No one there when I left an hour ago. You'd think he'd come back for a suitcase or some money or something. Yeah. Hey, Johnny. Mm-hmm. I called in the police. Oh. In the name of Worldwide, I filed charges of attempted fraud and collusion against him. They issued a warrant half an hour ago. He's on an APB and all the local bulletins. Well, I suppose you had to do it, Jim. Yeah, we'll let the police handle this part from now on, huh? How about Mrs. Kennedy? We'll keep an eye on her, too. Did you file any charges against her? Not yet. We need a statement from Franks. Jim. Yeah? What would you do if you were Hillary Franks? I'd try to grab an airplane. Maybe go down on a gallus, cross the border. Look up a friend, borrow some money. They'd get out and keep traveling. <laughs> what? He won't do anything like that. Won't he? He'll find himself a place to sit down and think. In the end, the cops won't find him. He'll find us. Want to bet? <laughs> By the next morning, the police had still been unable to locate Hillary Franks. I left Jim Carter in the room on a long-distance call to the insurance commission advising them of the events up to date, drove out to Hillary Franks' office. I noticed two police officers loitering across the street as I walked in the front door. 
Yes? How do you do? Are you another policeman? No, no, I'm not. Have they been bothering you a lot? If you aren't a policeman and you know all about this, what do you want? I want to help Mr. Franks if I can. I'm Johnny Dollar, Universal Adjustment Bureau. You're his secretary? Yes. How long have you worked for him? Twelve years. Do you like him? What? He's always been a fine man. I don't believe any of these things about him, and I don't see What's why... What's your name? I think he said Maria? Maria Vano. Maria, I'm not going to ask you any questions about Mr. Franks. I know enough about him now for my purposes. The rest he can tell me himself. Maria, I may be able to help him stay out of jail. I can do that if I talk to him. Well, how my do name's I... Johnny Dollar. I'm at the Pioneer Hotel. Remember that. But Mr. Dollar... I don't know whether he's phoned you yet or not. A man like that's going to need help, money. I'm not asking you if he's contacted you. But listen to me carefully. If he does phone you or contact you in any way, ask him to phone me. If you ever respected him or if you want to help him now, please ask him to telephone me. Thanks. I drove back to the hotel and waited for results. Another 12 hours went by. Ellery Franks was still missing, and Mrs. Kennedy was still refusing to admit anything. Finally, about 11 o'clock that night, my phone rang. Johnny Dollar. Hello. This is Hillary Franks. Where are you? Never mind. Dollar, they know all about me back at the home office, I suppose. Yes. I'd like to explain some things to you so you can pass them on. I'd like the people back there to know why I did it. Well, before I leave town... You won't get far. The police are looking for you. Oh, I can get away, all right. Mr. Franks, Worldwide doesn't want to prosecute. The notoriety would be bad for them. If you'd make a statement, sign it, I think I could talk them into dropping the whole matter. Maybe we'd better get together. Come on over. Oh, no. No, I'm not that crazy. Do you know how to get to the San Javier mission? I can find it. In 15 minutes? Right. And dollar? Yeah. It's right out in the open. If you bring the police, I'll use a gun. I bought one this morning. All right, Mr. Franks. There'll be another intriguing episode of the Lansing Fraud tomorrow. Tomorrow... $50,000 worth of murder. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by John Dawson, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure and join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs> 